What's up guys, Dylan here, and welcome to day eight of Advent of Code 2020 in Python. So if you like this video, please drop a like down below, subscribe for all of the 2020 Advent of Code, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the video. So day eight here, what do we have in store? Hand held halting. So we're on the plane, but there's kids sitting next to us. His console won't turn on. It's down to an infinite loop in the boot code. That's our input. Okay, so we're gonna be having boot code input with instructions and values. So if the instruction is accumulator, then the accumulator starts at zero and we increment the accumulator and then go to the next instruction. A jump means we just jump to the next instruction based off what it specifies. And it looks like not, NOP means no operation should just skip to the next one. Um, and so that means we are going to, so immediately before the program would run an instruction second time, the value in the accumulator is, okay, so we want immediately before any instruction is executed a second time, what value is in the accumulator? Okay, I think I have an idea here, control C, and paste that in. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do is we are, we're gonna have a couple variables. So we're gonna have uh, an accumulator variable, which keeps track of our accumulator, our line, which keeps track of the line in the boot code we're in. And then we, I guess we'll have to have like an instructions list to keep track of the instructions we've already seen before. And then as soon as we're on an instruction that we've already seen before, then we can return the accumulator value and that should be our answer. So let's go ahead and try and put that into code. You know, easier said than done. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and open up the file. So with open input 8.txt, as file and we'll have data just like every day is equal to file dot read lines and data is equal to line for line oh line dot strip for line in data and if we go ahead and check it just to make sure for line in data print line. Okay, and there's all of our instructions. So let's just go ahead and scroll to the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna write a function called get Back for get accumulator, I think. And data is a global variable, so I mean, we could pass in data, but it's a global variable, so I don't really think we need to. And we're gonna say our accumulator is equal to zero. Our, the line that we're currently on, we'll start on the first line. And instructions that we've seen before is equal to an empty list. So let's go ahead now what I'm thinking we're gonna do is we're gonna say while, okay, so we need to start by getting our first instruction. So we'll say current instruction, um, current instruction is going to be equal to uh, data line. And so that should be the very first line. And let's go ahead and verify that real quick. So print, um, current instruction and we'll say uh, just get back syntax error okay and so that indeed I believe was our first instruction so um, that's good to go and then we'll we'll say while um, current instruction not in so we're just going to go through and the reason why we're not doing a for loop is because line isn't increasing by one every time line could be increasing by um, any number or going backwards anytime so while current instruction 
not in instructions. The first thing we will do is append uh, instructions dot append current instruction. Now, if we look here at this, according to their example here. So we have the same instruction on two different lines, but if you look here, um, they ran as two separate instructions. So it can be the same command and the same number, but what, mo what makes them unique is being on different lines. So we need to make sure that we don't run in into an issue with, that, with our code. So I guess we can identify it by the line number because it's really just the line number. We want to know if the line number runs again. So we'll just say, I guess what we can do is instead of adding instruction to the list, we'll just add line to the list. And in sec instead of checking if current instruction is in instructions, then we'll just say while line not in instructions. So, okay, so that should be pretty easy because if we get back to the same line, then well, that's when we have an issue. Okay, so now what we need to do is current instruction is just a string like this now, but we can break it up by saying current instruction is equal to current instruction dot split. And then if we print current instruction, okay, just what I want. So then what we need to do is we, um, we need to parse uh, what the command is and the value. So we'll say command is equal to um, current instruction zero. So in this case, for the first line here, it'll be jump. And then we could either have a plus 11 and we need to convert this to an int, but we can't convert it to an int with the plus out front. So we'll say if, um, if plus in current current instruction one, and current instruction one here is the plus 11, um, then we'll just say num is equal to int current instruction, and just we'll just avoid uh, the very first character, which is the plus, else, um, the other option is if it were be negative 11, but if you have the string negative 11, that can just uh, be directly turned into an int. We don't have to get rid of the sign out front. And uh, well, for the record, I don't know if we have to get rid of the plus out front, but I'm just gonna play it safe. Um, and so that'll be current instruction, just current instruction. Okay. so. And then we're gonna say if CMD is equal to um, ACK, then accumulator plus equal num and increment the line by one. Else if command is equal to line, oh, not line, what am I talking about? Uh, if command is equal to jump, then we can say line plus equals num. And then one more, if cmd is equal to not, not bop, not, then we can just say line plus equals one. And then at the very end, we'll update our current instruction so that it can be checked by the loop condition here um, actually, we can just say, we can, I want to move this current instruction down here and that should take care of it. And then, so the loop will end once we found a repeating instruction and then we can return, we can return accumulator. And I think that should be it. So we'll just say ack is equal to get ack. And that's such a funny word, ack. Kind of like quack. Uh, print ack. 
or accumulator, whatever, whichever you like. And of course we have a syntax error. Um, what's going on here? Int argument must be a string, not a list. What did we try and convert here? Current instruction, ah, to be current instruction one. Oh, we did it again, what the heck? And okay, I guess we can solve this by saying uh, if num, num will be equal to current instruction. Okay, and so I see what I think we did here. So we grabbed uh, the actual plus 11 here, but here we're just, uh, this is looking at the whole list current instruction. So I think what we can do to solve this is we'll just say num is equal to current instruction one. And then we'll just say if plus in num, then int of num. That way I think then we'll just be working with the strings there. And 1915, let's go ahead and try it. And there we go, that's our answer for part one. So let's go ahead and move on to part two. So after some analysis, we believe exactly one instruction is corrupted. Somewhere in the program, either a JMP is supposed to be a NOP or a NOP is supposed to be a JMP. No accumulator instructions were harmed in the corruption of this boot code. Good, they already have a hard enough time uh, with the name like ACK, because that's just a funny name. Uh, the, pro the program is supposed to terminate by attempting to execute one instruction immediately after the instruction in the file. By changing exactly one jump or NOP, you can repair the boot code. So, okay, so for example, if we replace this jump, instead of going backwards, then it'll go down one and it'll reach the end of the file. And so what is the value of the accumulator after the program terminates? Okay, so this should be similar, but I think we'll be able to reuse parts of our code here. But so what I'm gonna try and do is on the outside at the topmost level we're gonna have a loop and that loop will run through and that loop if it finds jump then it'll replace it to nop and then it'll and then it'll go through and get the accumulator value and so we'll need a way to determine if it hit a repeat instruction or if it hit the end of the file and if it hit a re if it hit the end of the file well, then that's our answer. But if it hits a repeat instruction, then we gotta go back. And then because we only wanna change one of the lines, we'll change the line we changed back to its original and then keep going on and check the next line that has a jump in it. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll get into it with code here. So, so I think what we are gonna say here is for i in range length, of data and the reason why I'm not just going line by line is because I'm not if we just do it that way I'm not sure that if we update the line here in data I don't know if it'll update it in this topmost data I'm uh, Python is still kind of weird with scope to me not like Java but you know I'm always I'd rather play it safe than sorry when editing my global variables so we're gonna say okay so then we can say um, then we can say if jump in data i, then we will say data i is equal to data i dot replace. So we're going to replace the jump string with the um with the string not and i suppose it could come to the place where this doesn't work and if this doesn't work then we'll try the other way around if not in data then uh replace uh not with jump so but we're just going to test this case first so if that's the case and then we are going to say accumulator is equal to Okay, we're gonna need to write another function here. So I think we're gonna reuse some of the code from before, but we'll just say def get ack, get ack, 
uh, end 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 of file get ack end of file no input again because data is a global variable and I think what we'll do is we'll let's okay let's start with the baseline of we're gonna copy our code uh, from the previous function and we're just gonna modify it so we're gonna say here well first of all we can we'll be able to tell if we get to the end of the file if line uh, is now greater than or equal to length of data. So if line is greater than or equal to length of data, we're at the end of the file. So this line would throw an error because it's out of range, but more importantly, that means we didn't hit a loop. So we can just return accumulator at that point. And We'll return it as a tuple because we can say true. For true, we found the end of the file. Otherwise, if we never find the end of the file, it'll hit it, it will find a repeat instruction because he says here um, <laughs> if you change almost any of the jump instructions, the program will still eventually find another jump instruction. So I think we can assume that if we didn't change the right one, then it will find another repeat instruction. So that means this while loop will end and we can return at that point accumulator and false for we did not find the end of the file. So then data i is equal to that. And so then I guess we'll say ack and found is going to be equal to get ack end of file. And then we'll say if found, um, print ack and break, because we're all done. Otherwise, we are going to data i, we got to change the line back to what it originally was. So now we can go about testing the other lines. So data i is going to equal data i dot replace oops and this time it'll be not with jump and so if this doesn't work then we'll switch jump to not and not to jump but let's just see what, what goes on here so if we run that okay we got 944 so let's see if that is an acceptable answer and okay, we got the answer. All right, so uh, this has been Advent of Code Day 8 in Python. If you liked the video, please drop a like down below, subscribe for more, and leave any questions uh, down in the comments below. And I'll see you tomorrow.